this is Björn from the Definity Research Team, uh, and uh, well, welcome to uh, Community Conversations. Uh, and this is an opportunity for you, like the IC community, uh, to engage with contributors of the Internet Computer Ecosystem and also ask questions live. So, um, the next big step in the journey of the Internet Computer is um, actually the yeah, ability uh, to uh, develop um, tokenized open governance systems uh, controlling decentralized apps. And in the language of, of the Internet Computer, these are called service nervous systems. And in order to um, yeah, facilitate like, the tokenization, we need a reward scheme for such systems. And that's the goal of this presentation here. Um, I, I mean, I will start off with giving some, some background information and uh, also clarify some basic tokenomics concepts uh, before I then actually move uh, to the uh, actual design proposal itself. Uh, and at the end, then we also have um, time for a Q&A session, uh, which will be coordinated by Lara from the um, research team and supported by Daniel from the engineering team, which are um, both um, uh, on, on the line as well. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you have the ability to uh, submit, enter any questions in the, in the Q&A chat. Good, so yeah, I mean, I think, if, I mean, for me, this is the first time I'm doing this. So uh, as I recently joined uh, the foundation and I'm really looking forward to this uh, conversation and enjoy the ride. Okay, so let me give you some uh, uh, big picture information. Uh, so as depicted here on the left-hand side, the uh, network nervous system is a, a tokenized open governance system, which is controlling the internet computer. And so in a very similar fashion, uh, the SNS is meant to be a tokenized open uh, governance system, uh, which controls decentralized application dApps running on the internet computer. So um, that means like why such an SNS developers, users and investors can sort of jointly control these dApps and make decisions on you know, which features should be added. Uh, and a key element of these um, SNSs is that they enable decentralization and tokenization uh, for which we need our reward scheme, which we will cover in this presentation. So, actually move on. Right, so like, um, yeah, here's some further background. I mean, how this links to the uh, overall roadmap uh, the agreed um, release strategy is to um, release features and phases, allowing for a step by step, uh, step by step adoption, and and we will therefore follow the same principle also for SNS rewards. We start with a simple scheme um, uh, at first, uh, and uh, yeah. So I mean, what we have been doing now in, in I mean in April and May, in terms of context of the SNS, uh, at the end of April uh, we had a demo on the. Uh, uh, minimum viable product for the SNS uh, as part of the global R&D uh, calls. And um, we're having now this uh, community conversation on uh, the rewards, which will be followed by uh, a motion proposal that we also uh, plan to submit uh, you know, in May shortly after this, um, this presentation here. In terms of the technical releases, we have the upcoming Chromium release where we will have a first version of the governance and root canister, so delivering core functionality for an SNS, and then followed by the carbon release, which really focus on the service nervous system, delivers it, uh, and, and that delivery will then also include SNS rewards. If you want to have further you know, background and context, I mean, like there are some, some nice um, uh, presentation and, and, and talks around, I mean, in particular, uh, on the NNS and the SNS, uh, we have some community conversations um, given by, by Lara, so which you can find online. And also the demo that I just mentioned um, is uh, that was given by Daniel 
uh, you know, you can it's online. Online, you can watch it. So please check it out. Okay, cool. So um, let's now get a bit of sort of context and define some tokenomics concepts which we need um, to formulate the actual proposal later. Um, I think uh, we might have uh, different levels of experience in the audience. Some of you, uh, you know, might already be familiar with tokenomics. Some of you are not. So, uh, but in any case, even if that some some if you're familiar with the job, uh, subject, you know, it would be interesting, you know, to get your feedback and thoughts on it, because I think this material that we are uh, you know, using today is also going to be used going forward for education purposes. So, I think yeah, would be interested um, to get any any feedback on thoughts um, uh, from everybody. Okay, so what, what is tokenomics? Um, I mean, as, as the name sort of suggests, right, it's the uh, economics of a token system understood to run in, on, a, on, a, on a blockchain. And it actually covers uh, you know, a broad range of different topics, some of which I've listed on this slide. Uh, in the next in the next few slides, you know, I will give a bit further details on of of, of some key, con key concepts, uh, so that you know you get the first feeling. So, for example, uh, tokenomics um, deals with the development of um, token supply and demand. So, yeah, when do we add new tokens? A process which is called minting. Uh, when do we remove tokens from the supply, which is called burning? Do we actually have a limited total supply or an unlimited total supply? Uh, these are all very important questions uh, that you have to consider when you design um, a token system. Also, of course, you know the usage of the tokens you know has to be defined, and that is going to be closely linked to the actual use case that you will follow you know in the development of your particular DAP. Other questions which are important, I think, is um, how the tokens are distributed to the participants. Of the um, of the uh, SNS and also what kind of incentive mechanisms you um, uh, you want to give right by designing the tokenomics uh, setup. Okay, so I mean, yeah, I, mean, I mentioned supply and demand as you know something important. So let's illustrate that a little bit further. Uh, if you, you know look at the picture that you see here on the left hand side, you know that's something that you. Might have seen already as part of a sort of economics 101 course. Uh, so this picture essentially says that uh, supply increases um, with increasing price, and um, demand decreases with increasing price. And uh, now the intersection of these two curves, the supply and the demand curve, um, defines the so-called equilibrium price. So I mean, how do we end up in such an equilibrium price? So let's consider you know, a price uh, depicted called P1 here in the picture, right? Which is above that equilibrium, right? In such a case, we have more supply uh, than demand. That means you know, more people are willing to sell that price than are willing to buy. And that actually creates a downwards pressure on the price until we reach the equilibrium price. Vice versa, if you have a price which is uh, called P3 here in this picture, which is below the equilibrium, you will end up in a situation where the demand is higher than the supply. And that will create an upward pressure on the price, again, reaching the equilibrium price. So, um, yeah, so I think from that sort of uh, picture, it's clear that. The development of, of of token supply and demand is is really like a fundamental driver uh, for the token price. Therefore, like clearly a key consideration uh, when you design uh, such a system. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I have now um, some examples on the next two slides so that you get a bit of a further feeling of how you can uh, design, um, you know, a, sort of a supply development mechanism and um yeah so here on the, in the picture on the left hand side is is a is a is an example of um, a tokenomic system with limited su supply so like bitcoin now the um uh, the idea here is um depicted by the um 
uh, bars in purple that um, initially the supply in this system increases by 12.5% roughly per year uh, for the first four years and after Genesis, and then actually halves uh, in the following next four years and halves again, et cetera, et cetera. And if you follow such a scheme, you will get uh, supply development, which is depicted by the li solid line in the picture, where you can see that initially um, uh, the, the curve is quite steep. So we have a lot of new supply uh, um, uh, going on, which, which incentivizes in a way early participation in the protocol. And then over time, this, call, uh, this curve flattens. And I think the underlying motivation um, of that, that design was that designers of Bitcoin thought about uh, Bitcoin as something similar to commodity. So it is something that has a finite total supply. And if you start minting or say digging for it, you, uh, you know, it's initially it's easy, uh, but you know, the more you extract from the ground, the harder it gets. And, and that's why the uh, sort of the, the, uh, yeah, it, the kind of the supply increase you know, reduces over time significantly. Of course, you can also have cases where uh, you have um, a system that doesn't have an, a limited supply upfront. Uh, so uh, here I have another example for you. So um, you could, for example, design uh, a token system with unlimited linear supplies. So like that's a bit like what um, Ethereum is doing. So you see here, if you look at the green line, uh, you see that the supply actually increases linearly uh, by uh, actually uh, adding at maximum 18 million tokens every year and um, you know, producing essentially a straight line. I think in this case here, the um, uh, underlying motivation is that uh, this token is meant to be more like a utility token and also users that sort of start using the platform later on, you know, should have the ability to get access to newly minted tokens uh, and hence the idea of sort of to keep on sort of uh, supplying more tokens. Of course, what that, that picture does not show is um, the other effect of uh, uh, of, of like how supply could change, namely by you know, burning tokens um, that um, is not included here. And of course, in reality, you know, um, Ether also has now included, um, uh, like uh, our Ethereum has included a burning mechanism as well. So like the, uh, the curve will not go up like in a straight line at, at infinity. But um, uh, I think you get, you get the idea here that, you know, depending on your use case and, and uh, you, you know, you can design, uh, you know, like these um, supply increases in a, in, a, in a very different way. And of course, you know, there are many other ways, you know, uh, you can design your system. So like these are just two examples and two thought processes that underpinned these examples. All right, good. So um, now let's talk a bit about token usage. That was also one of the elements that I mentioned as, uh, you know, important for tokenomics. Um, Token usage is, is, is pretty broad, right? I mean, I think it really depends a lot on you know what in particular app that you are developing, and you know this slide is an attempt to uh, you know cluster these different use cases in, in categories, which sometimes can actually overlap. So um, let's go through this. Like the first one, uh, governance. Um, yeah, governance tokens you know give you the right to participate uh, in a you know in a voting process, uh, so you can. You can vote on proposed changes to a protocol or to a app. And uh, typically, right, in order to incentivize long-term thinking and commitment, like these um, systems and require that you stake your tokens, so like you, you lock them up for a certain period of time. Like a currency use case is um, also very common. So the idea is here that you the token is some sort of digital money, uh, which then facilitates the standard use cases of money, which are medium of exchange, unit of account, and store of value. Uh, I mean, for example, a stable coin uh, that is, um, um, let's say, packed to a US dollar 
uh, would be you know a, an example of a token that falls in that um, um, in that bucket. Then you have platform operations. So these are tokens that yeah, facilitate um, operations on the platform. So you can, for example, paste something uh, to store information or execute transactions. Uh, that's uh, if you look at the internet computer, uh, you see that the cycles actually would fall in this category. Then we have DeFi, uh, which stands for decentralized finance. Uh, these are use cases which, uh, you know, target sort of offering traditional financial functions like lending, saving, trading, etc., on the blockchain. And the DeFi tokens now incentivize users to facilitate these financial functions. For example, uh, incentivizing users to provide liquidity. Then we have also have, uh, and that, I think that's quite an interesting area as well, SoFi, social finance. And you know, that relates then to tokens which underpin a social network running on the blockchain. Uh, so um, yeah, this includes then you know, tokenization of popularity and reputation. So maybe you, know, you give um, tokens to somebody uh, whose blog post you found very informative, or uh, you, you, you hand over tokens as a sort of sign of, of reputation as well. Uh, and I think, um, yeah, that's, I think, uh, definitely a very exciting uh, and useful area for, for, for DEPS as well. All right, good. So um, I think now, now we have some, uh, defined some, some, some basic concepts. So let's, let's, think, let's move to the uh, actual proposal itself. Uh, the proposal for the SNS rewards scheme. I mean, I would focus on sort of two, two kinds of rewards. Um, uh, number one, uh, voting rewards. And um, number two, usage rewards. So let's start with um, the voting rewards. Um, yeah, so here is um, a picture which illustrates um, how a user can participate in voting uh, on an um, uh, service nervous system. So the idea is that the user uh, takes his tokens and um, stakes them, locks them up in a so-called neuron. And that neuron then has the ability to vote uh, on proposals submitted to the service nervous system. And in return for this voting, the user will get rewards, which will consist of newly minted tokens. And um, the amount of votes uh, voting power and also the amount of rewards of that particular neuron will depend on three key parameters. Number one, how much the user staked uh, in the neuron. Number two, like the dissolved delay. So this is like the de de delay, uh, um, uh, which is uh, until um, until which like the neuron will be locked up uh, once the dissolve uh, dissolving function is started and also the age of the neuron. And I mean, the, the, the idea of like, these parameters is, as mentioned before, um, we want to incentivize sort of long-term commitment and um, participation in the ecosystem. And that means like, you know, if you make, if you lock up, um, say, neuron uh, tokens for a long time, you're rewarded for that with a higher voting power and higher rewards. Okay, so um, now getting a bit more concretely in how um, like these voting rewards um, you know, can be then determined. Um, as a first step, I mean, we have to determine the pool of rewards uh, which are defined by a voting reward function. And I mean, the overall principle um, that uh, the overall idea that we're applying is um, leverage the structure of the NNS voting reward function and make it configurable. Um, the reasoning for that approach is, well, um, leveraging the NNS has two advantages. Number one, I mean, we can reuse the code base of the NNS, which allows for uh, timely delivery. And second, the concepts and terms of the NNS, I mean, are already familiar to the community and uh, therefore, you know, uh, is natural, right, to, uh, to, to reuse them. Uh, on the other end, of course, you know, um, not every SNS might need 
sort of the full feature set that the NNS has available. And that's why it's important that you know, the setup is configurable, that uh, you know, uh, a developer can, for example, um, choose not to use all the features or, or maybe adjust them to the particular use case. So uh, let's make it a bit more tangible how such like a configuration uh, would, would look like. And uh, yeah, I think that's best explained by a picture. So this picture here on the bottom shows you like the NNS reward function um, for voting rewards. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it starts with a value of 10% at Genesis and then reduces smoothly over time to 5% after a time period of eight years and remains flat afterwards. And um, what is nice, right, you can see uh, is like this whole function is actually determined by three parameters. The parameter which I called here R max. And the uh, in the in the picture, which is like the ten percent, uh, the starting value of the reward function, the value R min, which is like the five percent in the picture, and the time it takes to transition to there, which is called t delta here, uh, which is in this particular case eight years. And uh, yeah, now I think the idea is to make these parameters configurable, so like that you have a, you know a big influence on the on the um, yeah on the shape of the function. In particular, I mean, if you think about the difference between R max and R min, you know, that's actually the amount of incentive you generate to, uh, to, uh, that you give to early adopters. So that they, they have like the degree, uh, you know, a degree of freedom, right, to, to, to fine tune um, uh, uh, the setup. Uh, again, I'm being slightly more precise, the precise function that um, determines like this reward function in the formula is given at the top. And as you can see, you know, it involves like a quadratic term, which essentially ensures that we have like this kind of smooth transition um, um, from, from the start value to the end value over a certain period of time. And you see in the gray box on the right-hand side, then, you know, you find the three values uh, which determine the uh, shape of the function for the current NNS. Now, I, I thought it would be useful to, you know, give some examples on, you know, what happens if you play around with these parameters and what kind of, um, yeah, uh, impact that would have on the overall system. So um, let's look at some some examples now. So picking up again on, uh, you know, an example that you've seen earlier in the presentation, like the, the uh, you know, the Bitcoin-like setup, right, where we had this kind of supply development, right? If the target of your, you know, SNS is to have something like this, like a similar shape, then you can actually choose the parameters uh, as given you know, in, the, in the box on the right-hand side. So you, know, you start with something rather big, like, like you know, our max value start value of 17% and a transition length of, for example, 20 years and, uh, and our min, like an end point of, of 0%. And as you can see, I mean, uh, that will give you like a curve or like a supply development, which is relatively close to what um, the Bitcoin protocol is doing. And, and clearly, I mean, I think one, one key element here is that you have set R min to zero. That means, um, you know, after the transition length of, in this case, 20 years, you don't mint new um, tokens anymore uh, for, uh, for like governance reports. Uh, yes, so I think that, that you know, that's, that's one way you can use these parameters. Let's, let's look at the other use case that we have seen uh, previously, like uh, sort of a linear uh, increase uh, model. Again, here, right, you, can, you have the flexibility by choosing uh, appropriate parameters, uh, um, R max 20%, R min 40%, 4%, and again, transitioning for 20 years to achieve something which looks very similar to a, a linear model for the you know, specified transitioning of 20 years. Of course, afterwards, you know, they, these curves will deviate more, but I mean, for quite, you know, a foreseeable, um, you know, horizon, you can already, you know, um, model that kind of behavior pretty closely. So I would say, you know, conclusion is here, well, I mean, like the, you can see that um, like this very simple uh, configuration scheme, right, gives you quite some flexibility. 
uh, to achieve very different kind of setups, while on the other hand, still keeping it relatively simple for you to make uh, choices on your on your reward function. I mean, I, I would say in future, you know, you can foresee, of course, that there should be more flexibility, right? And I, of course, you can also, you know, then define maybe your reward function completely independent of like this uh, of this turnkey solution. Um, but I think that's at least like you know, as, as I would say, a solid module to start with. Okay, so uh, now we talked about the voting reward function, which determines how um, the total reward pool is determined. Uh, now let's think about the next step. Like, how do you split up the pie? How do you allocate that reward pool to the uh, uh, in the individual users? And uh, here, you know, I probably by now sound a little bit like a broken record, but I mean, I think the idea is exactly the same, right? So we um, leverage the uh, um, methodology from the NNS, but make it configurable, uh, having like the same advantages as as outlined before. Yeah, so let's make that a bit more explicit. So uh, in the NNS, um, you have um, like a simple concept, namely um, uh, each neuron, you know, receives a prorata amount of the total voting rewards according to its voting power. And the voting power is determined by this formula that you see in the middle of the slide. So essentially, it's like the product of the staked amount times the so-called dissolved delay bonus times the H bonus. The state amount, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's just straightforward. It's whatever amount you have put in your neuron. Um, the dissolved delay is uh, um, bonus is a function of the dissolved delay to which you have configured your uh, neuron. And the H bonus is a function of the age um, of, of, of your neuron. And um, yeah, so like, how, do you con how can you now configure that? So here is um, a little picture that illustrates that. Uh, so you have essentially like very simple linear functions that um, you know allow you to translate from H to H bonus or from dissolve delay to dissolve delay bonus. So let's make let's look at the graph at the bottom right. So if you have um, uh, a neuron that you know you just staked, uh, uh, and then then it will have actually an H of zero, and it will get an H bonus of one. Now over time, like as that uh, you know uh, neuron ages, you know this. Uh, uh, age bonus will increase linear over time uh, and reaching finally a maximum value at, at, at 1.25 after four years. And now the cool thing is that, um, well, you can see you have like these two red dots, right, in the picture. And um, the idea is that, you know, you as an SNS developer, right, you can choose and pick where you want to place these red dots. Yeah, you can make the curve steeper. You can make it flatter, uh, and that gives you again, you know, a lot of flexibility in designing your system, without sort of uh, uh, creating too much complexity for you in the configuration process. And for example, if you don't want to have an H bonus at all, right, which could be also, uh, of course, uh, a viable choice, then you just, you know, have um, a flat curve and just keep it flat at one uh, for for whatever age of the of the neuron. For the dissolved delay um, bonus, like the, the function, and you know, which is in blue, is, in a, is the story is very similar. Again, we have a linear function that, for the NNS, uh, you know, increases to a factor of two, uh, kept at after you know, after after eight years, and after, you know, and remains there afterwards. Um, and again, you can sort of you know, um, of course, change that and configure it by moving the red dot around. Um, there's a, an, another degree of freedom here, uh, and you can see like you know, this graph starts only at half a year because for the NNS, we have you know, the requirement of a minimum dissolved delay of half a year in the moment. Before that, you don't get any uh, voting power and rewards. Uh, and again, like, you know, that, that's something that you can pick and choose for the setup of your SNS that you are designing. Okay, so um, I think we can move on now. And um, I have um, yeah, one, one slide just to um, illustrate a bit further you know how like these kind of choices play out so imagine that you have uh, set up your sns and you are actually have five neuron cohorts so 
one cohort which has a dissolve of lay of, of zero years, one with two years, etc. One, four, six, eight, like depicted on the left hand side in this pie diagram. Right, each of these cohorts or groups of neurons has you know staked in total the same amount. Say each of them you know has staked say uh, uh, five million um, uh, tokens. Now, um, if you combine that with um, the dissolved lay uh, bonus function from the previous slide, and if we sort of assume for to simplify matters that the age of all these neurons is zero because you just staked I own neurons just started staking now. Then you, you actually end up in a distribution of the voting power and, and also of the you know the words uh, as seen by the um, you know pi diagram on the right hand side. So the first thing you probably will notice is that uh, the um, cohort with zero year staking, the, the, the neurons which did not stake at all, they don't get any. Um, Piece of the pi because okay, the minimum dissolved dissolve delay is six months. And then that leaves us with four groups of neurons. Four, uh, and uh, you can see that uh, they, of course, then you know, allocate the overall pool. Uh, and as you expect, you know, the, the eight year cohort will get a much bigger piece of the pi, pi in this case, 31%, compared to the two year cohort, which will only get 19%. And yeah, the underlying motivation is actually exactly like this incentivization for the long-term uh, commitment uh, and, 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 and long-term thinking uh, for the platform. All right, good. So I think we, um, we have now an idea on voting rewards. We, we, I think we covered on how to generate a pool and how to allocate it afterwards to the, to the participants. Um, now let's come to the last topic of the design proposal, namely the usage rewards. Um, I mean, the idea of usage rewards is to foster early adoption of the SNS and, and active usage on overall. And um, I think, yeah, the, the, of course, the meaning of usage, right, is extremely dependent on what uh, the SNS is meant to do. Right? So, uh, yeah, depending if you say a SOFI application or DeFi application or, you know, uh, something else. I think they are. You know, we, we can have you know, very broad, uh, different uh, use cases here um, uh, at, at, at stake, and um, and that of course means that it's not obvious, right, how to sort of design um, an umbrella system that kind of covers, uh, you know, uh, and gives you a turnkey solution for um, you know uh, storing and paying out usage rewards. So hence, uh, for that reason, I mean, the proposal is the following, right? We start with something very simple and also with something very flexible at start. Uh, and, and in particular, the idea is, well, you have an account uh, which contains a certain amount of already minted tokens. So like these tokens are earmarked for usage rewards. And that account is owned by a canister which is controlled by the SNS. And that canister then sort of can codify uh, when the rewards are paid out and to whom. So it's really up to, completely up to the SNS to define how that works. And uh, uh, yeah, and I think um, I would say that's probably like a, you know, a viable sort of option to start with. And then I think over time, right, we can, I think, then see, right, if further enhancements are necessary, right? For example, if we find out that um, a lot of usage rewards are designed in a very similar, similar fashion, maybe we can have some sort of core functionality uh, that, that is provided as, a, as part of a, you know, a general solution. Maybe also, um, you know, it turns out that it would be desirable to be able to newly mint um, um, tokens for paying out usage rewards, uh, which of course then also could be added in a later stage. But I think for that, in order to make these decisions, I think we probably need to gain some experience um, uh, and, uh, and, yeah, and see use cases and then sort of, you know, iterate. All right, good. So um, this brings me to um, the end um, of this um, presentation. And I think we can now move on to the uh, Q&A session. And I'm looking forward uh, to your questions. Yeah, hello everyone. So I'll ask uh, the questions to Björn, but in the meantime, we haven't had super many. So please also feel free to add more questions uh, while we already start. 
<clears throat> so yeah, uh, maybe to I think uh, pick up on your uh, one of your last slides, someone was asking whether the canister that holds the tokens for the usage rewards could be the auction canister. Um, yeah, I mean that's a good question, and I think um, yeah, I mean I think it's it, it can right. I think it, I mean I would say like the key thing is that that canister that um, you know controls that account you know has to be controlled by the SNS. So I think if uh, so now um, it depends a bit on sort of now what what we know how we define like this auction canister. But I mean if that's something that is controlled by the SNS, then I think you know. Um, uh, that, that would be that would be fine. Maybe to add to that, could that also instead of another canister, could that also be the SNS governance canister itself that could kind of hold the the tokens for, for usage reward? Would that also be useful, or that maybe not a good idea? Um, yeah, I think. Um, I mean, I, I, I would say it depends on. I mean, how exactly you, you want to. You know, play out like the um, like these usage rewards. I mean, I mean, I think one possibility might be that you say, well, I mean, like you have like that that account that is controlled by the SNS, and uh, we have to vote on uh, whenever you want to distribute something, right? So like that means like uh, you know, we, we all, whenever you know a payout happens, we need a a, a, non, a traditional proposal submitted to the SNS and being voted on by the SNS stakeholders. So so indeed that would be an option, and uh, yeah, and and whether that is practical. Depends very much on so how often you want to do that and uh, and yeah and again linking to the use case that you want to pursue. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, so maybe to add, someone also asked what's the ratio of staking tokens to reward tokens. So if I understand this question correctly, I guess the question would be. How can you predict if you kind of invest one token, how many rewards you get back? And I mean, this was asked rather in the beginning. So I hope in the, the meantime, this got clear. I, I maybe also wanted to ask that we actually have a talk on this uh, from John um, about how you can maybe predict that better um, in the NNS. And of course, in the SNS, it's uh, pretty similar. But as Bjorn said, um, you you would actually maybe have different parameters, so it would uh, look slightly differently. Yeah, I don't. I just wanted to mention it because it was mentioned in chat. I don't know, Bjorn. Maybe you have something to add to that. How how you could maybe model that well, or yeah. Otherwise, I guess it's yeah. just a comment. <laughs> yeah. No, I think yeah. It's. I mean, I think to a certain extent we covered it. Uh, you know, in these examples that I showed, where you can sort of see why if you make say the same configuration choice as the NNS um, uh, uh, for the result delay uh, bonus, you know, how that sort of, you know, uh, then influences like the, the voting power and therefore also the reward distribution. And I think, um, and I mean, like the good thing is like the voting power calculation is, you know, it's, it's very simple, right? It's just the product of the numbers. So um, I think it's probably, um, as you said, Laura, I mean, a good idea, right, to um, uh, yeah, just simulate, you know, the, you know uh, what would happen for different choices that developers have in mind and then get a first feeling you know on how if the resulting pie diagram of the distribution looks like something they would, would expect right and um it would also depend on how others vote in the end right that that's i guess the the part that's hard to predict i guess <laughs> um yeah. yes very true yes great um so uh, there was also a question on the Bitcoin chart. Um, and, and maybe it would be useful if you can go back to the slide. I tried my best to tell you what the question is. So the question was uh, whether you can maybe explain again the Y axis on this slide. Um, and specifically, what does it mean that the reward is 25%? And why does it go up over time? So... Uh, Okay. No, I think it's, um, yeah, let me. Does that make sense? Me, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's, um, so, um, I mean, I think the, um, the thing is, and I think it's a fair point, maybe I didn't mention that uh, um, explicitly. So, I mean, we have two Y axes here, right, in, in this diagram, right? right? On the left-hand side, you have the percentage numbers, and these are sort of the, the rewards, i.e. like the, the purple columns are mapped to that axis, right? So that means in particular that we start with a, 
a reward or yeah of a supply increase of 17 percent and then that it decreases over time to zero percent now like the um on the right hand side we have actually like the y-axis which um, measures the total supply so that belongs to the lines in that picture and 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 you can see that i mean uh, for, for the bitcoin um, protocol of course uh, you know we converge to a number slightly below 21 million that's you know the design of the protocol and uh, the bit dark um, uh, purple line which depicts like the the development of the sns right now with that configuration choice you know gives you something very similar so like that so i mean to answer your question i think yeah we have really uh, like the, the these um, values are mapped to two axes and uh, the the relevant axis for the um, um uh, reward um, is the left hand side and you see that it uh, starts with 70 percent and then goes down over time Great, thanks. I think it clarified the question <laughs> according to the feedback that we got. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, the next question, I'm not sure uh, if you can answer this. Um, maybe you have a spontaneous idea. The question is while incentivizing early adopters is a good idea, front loaded reward systems have been showing to be great for creating whales. So that might be a negative effect of them. Um, yeah, have we thought about this and how does the reward system deal with that? Um, okay, so I'm not sure if I fully understood the question. And I think it's a question um, about like, why do we want to have, you know, why do we want to, why do we want to incentivize early adoption? Is, is that the, the, the core of the question? I, as I understand it, I think the assumption is that if you incentivize early adopters, you might end up with a few whales. I assume if you have only few early users. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah. maybe. No. Yeah. Maybe okay, maybe. no, understood now. And I, yeah, I think that's a good question. So, and again, let, let's go to back to like the same picture, right? So um, if you, I mean, I think if you look at um, Bitcoin, I think that's indeed a valid concern. And that's maybe also where this question comes from, right? I mean, I think you can see, uh, or actually maybe actually this picture is even better, right? Um, you see initially, right, it's relatively easy uh, um, to, 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 to get um, Bitcoin, right, uh, rewards, and it becomes hard and hard over time. And that will definitely lead to some concentration, right, and the dilution of the tokens. I mean, that's true, right? Of, of course, on the other hand, I mean, like, the purpose of like this thing is, of course, to also to, to get the protocol running so like, that people are actually have an interest to join the party. And the more people that join, you know, the more valuable the thing counts overall. But yeah, but I think but the, the concern is valid. And um, and that's actually precisely also why um, you know you have the ability to design different uh, um, supply increase functions, like for example the one that um, is ha happening, and also like the same actually or a similar way like the the tokenomics that underpins the internet computer. I think here the idea is um, you know uh, we should continue to mint um, rewards over time uh, because that means that also people that maybe join a bit later have still you know a very decent chance to uh, to to get a share of the total supply. And, uh, and so that, and you're not, so, you know, if you're too late to the party, you know, you can still dance. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. Um, so I guess maybe the next few questions are uh, not only on rewards, but uh, also um, a bit broader maybe. So one question is whether the SNS is immutable and whether the parameters of the SNS for an application can be changed after its release um, through governance proposals. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it's yeah, it's a, it's a good question, and um, and I mean, I mean, from my perspective, the answer is absolutely yes. Right? I mean, I think the the idea is that I mean, the SNS you know facilitates uh, decentralization uh, and a tokenized open governance system. And so, if um, the uh, you know the users, the developers, like essentially the SNS community decides to change a certain parameter or add a new feature, they absolutely can do that by submitting a proposal and you know drumming up the according support um, of the community for the SNS. So I think that's very much in the spirit of the SNS. Mm -hmm. So maybe you kind of already then also answered the the next question, but I'll never add, uh, let's make it explicit. So is there a way to mark uh, supply parameters immutable? Uh, or can they always also be modified by voting? Mm -hmm. hmm. 
So maybe yes. the, the question is, are there exceptions to, to what you just said for, for a good yes. reason, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 understood. Um, hmm, that's interesting. I mean, I didn't think about that one um, before. So, um, I mean, of, of course, right, you can make it an explicit sort of design consideration that sort of, you know, that certain um, features, you know, should be also after the launch of the FNS configurable uh, and other features maybe not. Um, but I think, at least in the moment, right? I think we don't have a sort of a, um, a vehicle, right, to sort of uh, to not allow an update of certain parameters compared to others. I mean, I don't know, Lara, if you have other thoughts on that one, but I think that's currently not. I mean, yeah, if you, I mean, essentially, if you have the majority with you, right, you can change the SNS, and that that means you can, you know, uh, probably overrule any prior design decisions. Yeah, so yeah, I think very much so in at least in this initial version that 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 we plan for the SNS, I think the goal is to have things as um, configurable for the SNS as possible. And yeah, I think uh, as you also said, I mean, just say it's the same in the NNS, right? Basically, you can at any time change the rules of the game, and that's kind of the whole purpose of of the decentralized system. Um, that yeah, if the majority at some point decides otherwise, um, then this will be the case. So I think uh, basically as a feature, it will, at least in the beginning, I think not be supported that you can kind of uh, make some parameters immutable. Of course, if that's something that, that many want, uh, I think we can reconsider that in future designs. Um, yeah. Um, then another question is, um, whether the SNS will have a community fund function. So also not directly on rewards. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, again, I think it's a good question. Um, I mean, definitely like, I mean, I think if you, uh, if you go like to like the, um, you know, the blog posts that have been written about the community fund so far, I mean, it, that's like the concept of the fund is clearly linked to SNSs. And I think the spirit of the, of the idea is to say, look, you know, we have staked capital on the internet computer in the form of lock neurons. And how can we make sort of additional productive use of these, um, um, uh, uh, of this capital? And, uh, and the idea is then to say, look, you know, uh, can we, you know, parts or somehow invest, uh, you know, uh, um, elements of this capital in, uh, in particular SNSs managed by, uh, you know, our community. I mean, uh, so th definitely there's a linkage um, uh, and uh, the, Know, precise um, approach, right, is, 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 is being worked on. I think there are many options. And um, uh, I mean, we are also just, we have some discussions in some of the forums on that topic. And uh, yeah, I, I would say at this stage, uh, I guess um, we're like, we, 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 can, we can say that we are actively working on it. And uh, we know uh, we keep definitely like the community, um, you know, up to date and, and, and share news as soon as it's available. Yeah, maybe I can add to that, that I guess, uh, as we currently, uh, the current thinking is that it will not be part of the initial version of the SNS, but as you correctly said, it will very much be something that is closely interlinked with the SNSs, and, and once we have it, it it's uh, envisioned to work with the SNSs. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, so I think there were no more questions from the chat. I thought maybe I'll also bring up one of the questions that was asked in the uh, forum post. Uh, there, there was, a, a, I guess, a little bit a question or discussion around what are the advantages or disadvantages of having a reward pool uh, versus uh, minting the tokens freshly for paying rewards. I guess in the current design, the idea would be that for voting rewards, we would actually mint um, tokens, but for the rewards, we would have them already minted. Uh, yeah, may maybe you have a comment on what are considerations to make there or what would be other design options. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's, uh, that's also a fair question. Um, I, mean, I think the, 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 the key principle that we follow right in this particular proposal here is to say like, you know, we're looking for something um, that, um, uh, we can sort of ship quickly and in a practical way, and and hence, like we we you know uh, we we propose, propose to sort of leverage as much 
functionality um, from the NNS, which you know then implies that, for example, our voting rewards are uh, newly minted. And for the usage rewards, we have like this idea of the of the earmarked account um, with already minted ones. Um, so like these are really, I would say, release considerations. I mean, and I think then you know when we now you know people start using this, I mean, I think we, I mean, definitely consider. Can, can consider other options. I mean, for example, if people, you know, have, uh, you know, a clear case for why usage rewards should be newly minted as well, um, then we can consider adding such a feature. Uh, uh, and, you know, I totally agree that this might be useful. And um, yeah, I, I guess like the best thing is really start, you know, start, start using, is, using it and then iterating so that we can have like concrete use cases on which we then, you know, build in the next phase, like uh, a core functionality additional core mm -hmm. functionality. Yeah. And I mean, could you imagine what, what could be a, a reason for or against actually minting the tokens? I guess maybe, I don't know, could it have some advantages having a fixed supply from the beginning and not minting fresh tokens or? Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's- Or the um, other way around, right? Maybe yes. it was already what yeah. you already showed. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I mean, that, that's right. I think, I mean, if you think about, um, you know, the examples that I gave, right, where, you know, you have um, protocols, um, you know, which are very successful, which have a limited supply. Um, of course, you know, if you if you look sort of uh, um, in terms of uh, price development, um, if um, if the limit, if there's a limited supply, right, that means um, that uh, you will typically have um, uh, deflationary pressure. So like on the, on the price, i.e. like price is going up. So, you know, if, if that's like a primary goal, of, of your system, you know, that's definitely something, you know, that you consider. And the, the good thing is, you know, as far as like the voting rewards go, you can actually achieve that, right? Like when we had this um, example where uh, you, um, by setting the parameter called Rmin to 0% after a certain period of time, you end up exactly in such a stage where no new minting occurs. So you have the ability to get to that stage if you think that's useful for your, um, your SNS. And I mean, and so basically, course, I mean, it will influence your supply, right? If if you choose yes. these things differently, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, exactly, yes. And I mean, and maybe oh. another thing to add is, of course, you know, if you um, if you also um, plan to add burning functionality, like i.e., removing tokens um from 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 the supply, I think then typically, mm -hmm. right, you probably um uh, will not go for a finite uh, supply model. Because, like, I mean, and then over time, potentially, you know, you just tokens can just vanish, right? And you will just burn everything. Um, but, uh, but you know, but but who knows? Like, you know, maybe, like, I think there there are many use cases. So, but I think that at least what I've seen so far, right? I mean, typically, right? If you if you have burning as a feature, then you probably also uh, don't limit um, the supply upfront. But yeah, mm -hmm. but, but I'm sure you know you can come up with some some clever combinations as well. Great. Yeah, I think there were no more questions. Um, so maybe for everyone, that's the last chance to write one more question here in the chat. But I guess, uh, yeah, you're also, of course, welcome to afterwards write in the forum post. Um, and yeah, I guess if uh, no one is writing any questions right now. Ah, there was there's one more question. Will the SNS be in Rust and Motoko? Um, yeah, I actually, that sounds like a question I should sort of uh, ping back to you. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> um, currently we're only implementing it in Rust. Um, yeah, I guess it's, uh, <laughs> let's see, but for maintainability, it's of course easier if we just have uh, one version. But I, I guess the, maybe a reason for that is also, I mean, one reason for that is, um, that we could reuse a lot of code from the NNS that way. And I guess a, a reason for um, maybe why hopefully end users don't have to care that much <laughs> is because the, the whole goal of the SNS is also that we provide this kind, kind of as a system function and as, as a service from the IC, right? So the idea would be that end users would hopefully not have to change the code um, every day. So um, yeah, we hope <laughs> that therefore uh, it shouldn't matter too much. Um, but of course, uh, it, it's uh, also nice to just review the code and understand. Um, but yeah, in the first version, it will definitely just be Rust. 
Yeah, and Daniel just wrote the SNS can integrate with canisters written in Motoko. Of course, uh, maybe that, that's a very good point, right? So just because the SNS is in Rust, that doesn't mean it can only um, govern canisters that are also written in Rust. So yeah, thanks, Daniel. That's a very important point to, to underline. All right. Yeah, so I think, uh, oh, there's another question. <laughs> Uh, could there be a case where there is no rewards for staking, but still incentivizing the holding of coins for governance purpose solely? So, yeah. I think yeah. yes, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting one. So I think, yes, there is. I mean, I think we um, actually had recently some internal discussions on that topic as well. Um, I think in the moment that we've, we've, we've said, well, you know, you can incentivize uh, participation and governance by paying out voting rewards. Um, we also, you know, discussed that, you know, you have full flexibility on defining your voting reward function. So, you know, if you could choose that, you know, there are no voting rewards paid out even at start. And and I think there's still, um, you know, um, a case to make that this people have an incentive because I mean, they, if they sort of focus on sort of the long-term development um, of the platform and long-term success, right, there might be, um, incentivized to to vote right on on proposals and participate in this discussion even without like a direct payout because i mean they just you know they believe in the project and of course they would also benefit right if then the project becomes successful and, and therefore like the according tokens become more valuable so i think there is definitely like a case to be made uh, that that you can you know expect uh, like that kind of participation even without um, um, uh, governance voting rewards mm -hmm. yeah Okay, <laughs> I'll try one more time. I mean, I'm excited if I uh, think it's the last question and one more comes in. So I will definitely not complain about that. <laughs> but now I'm not seeing a new one. So I, I guess we, we can uh, come to an end. Thank you very much, Björn, for the nice presentation. Yeah, thank you, all, everybody, too, for the good questions. And yeah, uh, looking forward to, um, you know, take this topic further now. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for joining everyone. And yeah, see you next time. <laughs> Talk soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.